Hello and welcome. I'm so glad to have you with us today. I have Michael Fokers and Danya El Hassan with me, uh, both of which are product managers for AutoCAD. And so um, they're going to tell us a little bit about what's new in AutoCAD uh, that just released. What was it, March that it released? <laughs> Late March, that's right, yeah. Late March, yes. I don't keep track of that stuff. Einstein always said, why remember something you can look up? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, we're going to give everyone just a, another minute or two to get logged in. And while we're doing that, if you could please open up the question panel and just put a little note of where you are joining from. I always like to see who's joined and get to know you a little bit. So um, again, open up that question and answer panel and just type in the questions where you're joining from in the world. I see David is joining from Pennsylvania. Welcome, David. Kayla is joining from California. Nice to have you with us. Care is joining from Chicago. Great. I love to see everyone joining. Um, I am going to give everyone another minute or so. So if you just joined, um, we're just trying to you know get to know who is on the line with us. So please definitely, you know, type in the question panel where you're joining from. Ah, Gary from Alberta, Canada. Great. Did I hear anybody I from might Europe? Pronounce this wrong. What's that, Michael? Anyone from Europe? Not yet. Okay. Um, let's see. So I, I, I apologize if I pronounce this wrong. Marilis is coming in from Canada. So good morning. Oh, we have we have Mark uh, Ilio from Barcelona. So we there do we have go. one from Spain there. Great. Ah, Nilish from India, and Ray from South Africa. So we do have a global audience. This is wonderful. Uh, amazing. All right, let me check the time really quick. I, I think I think we've given everyone enough time to jump in and get their audio checked. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, just talk a little bit about um, our meetup. And so those, those of you that have been joining us for a while, you know that your lines are muted. Uh, this is just to reduce background noise because we are recording this so that you have it to look at later on. Or if you'd like to share it with your coworkers or friends, you're more than welcome to do that with the link that's sent to you. And if you do have questions, we do highly encourage them during the meetup. So uh, that's why I have you practice at, uh, putting a little something in the question panel so that you can learn how to ask those questions. If you do have questions throughout the uh, presentation, do add those to the question panel. We will come to those when we have a good stopping point and, um, and Michael or Danya will be able to answer those. Also, if you would like me to open up your line so that you can ask your question live, uh, feel free to raise your hand in that Q&A or in the uh, attendees panel so that uh, I can unmute your line for you and you can speak to us uh, in person or as close to in person as we can right now, right? All right, and just quickly, I wanna share the safe harbor statement. Uh, basically, I, I don't expect us to do this because we're talking about what just came out, but if we make any uh, comments about forward-looking statements, uh, anything planned for future development. Um, that is not a promise that it will end up in the software, but uh, you know, let you, just letting you know what we may be working on. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Michael. And Michael, I'm going to make you presenter. Please. Yep, and you should be able to share your screen now. Great, and do you see a full screen? I do, yes. Excellent, okay, okay. great. Um, let me go ahead and get started. Uh, before I do, though, can I just do a quick check? Uh, Dania, are you back on the line yet? Yes, I am. Okay. Sorry, oh, I, I was able to see if the camera work still, but um, I'm here with you. Okay. Great. Good to see you. All right. So, hey, everyone. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. If uh, if you are calling from Europe, uh, my name is Michael Folkers. I'm a product manager on the on the AutoCAD team. 
Uh, I focus primarily on our desktop products, and I'm joined today by Dania El Hassan, uh, a friend and colleague on the team. Dania, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, yeah, also a product manager on the AutoCAD team and uh, focus a little bit more on uh, the web and mobile products um, and kind of connected AutoCAD experiences. Great, thanks. So um, today we're going to try to keep it in the meetup format. And by that, I mean, we're not going to present the whole time. We're going to try to get through quite a few slides uh, in short order so that we can open it up for Q&A. Uh, if, if I'm speaking, then Donnie is in the background and can uh, have a look at questions that you may raise. And likewise, if Donnie is speaking, I can be looking at the Q&A panel too. Um, and then at the end, I think we're going to have some time for Q&A if you need it. So, hey, uh, before we start, I, I think it's uh, important to go ahead and talk about uh, the elephant in the room. Uh, we have been uh, exposed to perhaps one of the most disruptive events in our lives, if not our careers. And uh, we know that that's affecting our customers. It's certainly affecting us. Uh, I'm, I'm taking this call today from uh, the study in my house. Uh, that's not very normal for us to do a webinar. Uh, outside my house, I have somebody playing piano. Uh, it's 7.30, it's eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, they've been playing piano for about an hour. They're not very good, uh, but you know, for whatever reason, we're taking it in stride and, and being pretty relaxed about it. I'm sure in your homes, uh, if you're having shelter in place uh, orders that you're trying to adhere to, you're trying to figure out how to be productive. We certainly are. I wanna let you know that Autodesk has uh, made some efforts to make uh, parts of our organization available to our customers during this time. Um, and we have a resource center uh, that's available to you. We've also, uh, on this resource center, we've made it possible for you to connect to uh, our community in a little bit more substantial ways. Uh, we're trying to reach out to our education community and support them uh, with programs and sample uh, files and sample lessons that can help. Uh, we are making available uh, our knowledge base articles around how you can work more productively remotely. Um, and then in addition to this, we've uh, launched an extended access program. This extended access program makes available our cloud connected services. Uh, to our customers uh, for free until May 31st. Uh, it's important to know that these are trial versions. These trial versions, uh, we would not have made trial versions available during a pandemic ordinarily, but we were trying to move fast. So that introduces uh, issues like you may get dialogues that are trying to promote a, a sale or uh, marketing information. That's completely unintentional. We were just trying to move very fast. But I think importantly for our customers, the thing that this uh, that this program allows you to do is use these trial versions for commercial use of these participating products until May 31st. We hope they're helpful. Uh, certainly at the end of the uh, webinar today when we move into Q&A, if you've got questions about that, hopefully we can help you with that. So with that, let's get started. So today we're gonna break it up into three sections. I'm gonna talk to you briefly about uh, AutoCAD and uh, our specialized tool sets. I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to hand it off to Dania to talk about uh, you know, the benefits that come from a connected AutoCAD. And then finally, we'll talk quickly about our uh, what's new items in um, AutoCAD 2021. So with that, let me start with the uh, specialized tool sets. So over the past 20 years, we've been investing in these tool sets in a variety of ways. They, they were available separately. And now as a consequence of subscription, you have access to every tool set that we have available to you. Um, this is pretty important because what it means is that, you know, depending on the discipline that you have, the tool set that you need will be available to you without having to, cons without having to consider that at purchase time. Uh, so this is an architecture web uh, meetup. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you guys uh, might be interested in the architecture tool set and maybe raster design. So I'm going to focus my uh, attention on those uh, tool sets today. Uh, obviously, if you find yourself in a position where uh, you need to do some uh, building maintenance or building engineering, maybe the MEP, MEP tool set would be of interest to you. Uh, but you have access just as a, as a benefit of your subscription to all of these tool sets. So one of the benefits of these is that you can access a lot, you can access a, a ton of specialized content. So the architecture tool set, for example, has something like 8,000 intelligent uh, parts. Um, but more importantly, I think 
I think the thing that gets missed in that is that basically we're trying to help you be more productive. We're trying to help you collapse the time that it takes to do common tasks. So we help you by automating those tasks. You're going to be in a familiar AutoCAD uh, user interface, so hopefully you'll be able to spin up pretty sweet, pretty uh, quickly in these tool sets, and you'll be able to cross your disciplines with these. So like I said, the architecture tool set contains uh, a lot of what we're referring to as these intelligent objects. Uh, but again, the objective here is to accelerate uh, common tasks that you do today. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. I talked briefly about the raster tool set. Uh, and basically, you know, a common use case that we deal with is importing raster imagery into our designs and then trying to convert them either into DWG objects or some sort of vector art. Um, our ability to manipulate this quickly and effectively and incorporate this content into our designs is one of the benefits of raster design and it's available to you as part of your subscription. So like I said, uh, the content that's available to us for uh, the architecture tool set is certainly interesting, um, but more interesting to me is that the times for common use cases like generating floor plans uh, or generating elevations, generating building sections, common things that we do uh, to create uh, document sets or designs for our customers, the, these kinds of time savings are, are substantial. And what I would suggest is if you have time, uh, maybe you do have more time uh, now with these shelter in place orders, you might have a look at these productivity studies that we've made available on our site. I'm only illustrating a couple examples here, but in a, a study that we commissioned, we found that our, our customers were generating somewhere on the order of, of half to 60% to time savings in terms of the common tasks that they're performing in, in their designs today. So we've got a, we, ha, we have a few here. I'm gonna go ahead and get through these just so that we can get to a uh, question and answer. But again, in our productivity studies, we have uh, all kinds of tasks that you would perform and, and how we help automate those tasks for you in your, in your use cases. With that, let me hand it to my friend, Dania. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, if you're in a far off time zone. Um, today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, what we have for connected AutoCAD experiences. And I'm gonna start on the next slide with um, our web and mobile experiences. So in order to enable better uh, workflows for you, we're uh, providing subscription access to our web and mobile products as, as part of that. So it enables you to work with your DWG with AutoCAD on any platform. So, um, you know, the uh, specialized tool sets are, are definitely great for when you're in the office with your real deal um, big boy AutoCAD computer. But your AutoCAD subscriptions also include access to the web and mobile uh, app that's brand new and an enhanced mobile app as well. So whether you're on AutoCAD for Windows, Mac, AutoCAD on the web or mobile, you have an AutoCAD that's uh, purpose built for you. Next slide. So really what this allows you to do is um, take the power of AutoCAD with you wherever you are. So it gives you um, kind of that continuous connectivity so you can access your CAD drawings at job sites and the client meetings, um, or maybe when you're working from home. Um, it also really enables connected workflows, so you can really be on any device, um, desktop, web, or mobile, iPad, uh, you know, anything you've got with you, we have an AutoCAD that works for you. And really it works on trusted AutoCAD technology, so you're working with a real DWG and helps sort of uh, Make sure that you're accessing the single source of truth um, to allow you to view, edit, and create those DWGs from any device. So really, there's no longer a need for you to bring those printed drawings to the job site. Um, so let's a, take a little look at the AutoCAD web app. So this is the new addition to the AutoCAD web uh, family of products, or sorry, the AutoCAD family of products. Um, and it runs in the browser, no install required. So all you have to do is just go to web.autocad.com and you sign in with your Autodesk ID and you can start working. It's a simplified interface, so you get those core AutoCAD uh, 2D drafting tools and commands. It's familiar, but it's very powerful. It even has some of the um, keyboard shortcuts that you're used to, like PL to create a, a polyline. So you'll find it very familiar. It's also 
quite easy to learn, um, but very powerful because you're working with the real DWG. So it's built on that AutoCAD core engine. Uh, it gives you precision, consistency, and fidelity, um, and a connected experience. Next slide. So let's also take a look at the mobile app. This is um, being rebuilt. Um, it's rebuilt on the uh, iOS platform and uh, has the same experience as you would expect from an AutoCAD application. So it allows you to sort of to extend your workflows um, from the office to the job site um, or even a client site and, and really allows you to say take as built or do a structural survey real quick uh, while you're on site, take photos and really add that information all back to the DWG directly. So really helps you save a lot of time when you're on the go and, and trying to make sure to um, set yourself up for the right drafting experience. So um, it also takes advantage of a really beautiful high resolution display and supports the, high, uh, the stylus for precise drafting and editing uh, while you're on the go. So enable, in order to enable better workflows across desktop, web, and mobile, we've also made it easier to access your data. And so when you use desktop and you save to AutoCAD web and mobile, that means that when you access your AutoCAD from AutoCAD web or AutoCAD mobile, you have direct access to those files that you saved from your desktop. So you can pick it up, you know, add information to that drawing, save it back, and you'll have it again when you get back to your desktop. So this is a really powerful way to use Autodesk um, cloud technologies to be able to take your DWGs wherever you go and, and really unlock the power of the AutoCAD web and mobile apps. Next slide. In addition, we also know that some of you have already standardized on some of the uh, other uh, you know, famous cloud providers. So we've actually partnered with most of them, Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, and Google Drive to be able to give you rich DWG experiences in those applications. So if you have a, uh, a file, a DWG file inside, in this example, we're, we're using uh, Dropbox, but it works with all four of these experiences. You're able to preview that file and quickly open it in the AutoCAD web app to view and edit those DWGs uh, very simply, save it back, and you know you're working on the latest file. So this really helps kind of uh, minimize the seams across the parts of your um, organization and technology to make it easier for you to work with your files uh, on the go. Next. So this is really what um, we've been talking about um, over the last couple of years is just making sure that you have uh, easy access to those DWGs. And in addition to being able to open them uh, in those online providers experiences, you can also access them from within the AutoCAD experience. So whether you're in AutoCAD web or in, your, in AutoCAD mobile, you can uh, connect your uh, cloud storage locations and very easily open those files, work with those files and save them back straight from the AutoCAD uh, web app. Um, that really uh, is the second piece of the story to be able to seamlessly work with your DWG files stored in the cloud in Google Drive, in Microsoft SharePoint or OneDrive, Dropbox or Box. And so that's kind of the overall experience that I wanted to discuss in, in terms of connected AutoCAD. And I'm going to send it back over to Michael uh, to finish us off. Thank you, Dania. Thanks, so Michael. now let's, uh, you got me, Michelle? I, I do. Yeah. I okay. just wanted to jump in here, if that's okay. Uh, we did have a couple of questions on the mobile app, if we can answer those really quick. That's great. Okay. So Janelle asked the question, can we use the mobile for redline markups? Absolutely. So the AutoCAD mobile app <clears throat> has uh, redline and markup tools that allow you to add text, clouds, uh, you know, uh, some of the common markup tools that you would expect um, from a markup tool editor. So yes, you can add all of those uh, comments and markups directly to the DWG, and uh, they'll be they'll be in the DWG wherever you save it and take it with you afterwards. Great, and she also asked the question, does the web app work with Vault Professional? Um, there's not a direct integration from within the AutoCAD web app, but uh, the, uh, the Vault app does work um, with the web app. 
So you would have to download the file and, and upload it to uh, the AutoCAD web app at this time. Um, we are looking at better ways of doing that, but for now, um, there that's that's the way that we would work with Vault. Okay, and one more question uh, from Christelle. I have customers that have a no cloud policy. Is it possible to work without the web app? Um, and could an admin suppress this functionality? Um, so yes, you can suppress the functionality, but there is one thing I will say is that the AutoCAD web app is not like most cloud applications in that it's not connected actively to a cloud service when you're using it. So what happens is you actually download uh, a, a small uh, client within the browser that allows you to work directly on your desktop. And so unlike cloud apps that have to sort of meet uh, really high standards of security. Um, this really um, isn't a cloud application in that you can run that directly from within the browser without connectivity after you've you've downloaded it. So a little bit of a um, complex technology um, there, but um, we've seen that some of our um, uh, our sort of uh, government contracts and and others that really have these uh, policies in place. They, they didn't even want to audit us because uh, we're, we don't qualify as a uh, cloud application. And so um, we may not have the same standards to hold here as a web application and not a cloud application. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. So I, you want me to take it back, Michelle? Yep. Okay. Yep, go for it. So I could have done a better job when I talked about the extended access program, but just to make it super clear, right? The web and mobile apps, if you haven't used them before, are available to you now. They're available to people that you collaborate with, um, and they're available for commercial use. So uh, make sure that you take advantage of those capabilities that exist today, even if it's only in a learning capacity. I think it'll be super helpful for you when we get downstream. So let's talk about some of the capability that we introduced in AutoCAD 2021. So uh, each of the features that I'm gonna to talk to you about today really leverage that cloud connected capability that Dania referred to just a moment ago. Um, so for drawing files that are saved to OneDrive, Dropbox, and Box, cloud storage, uh, when, when you save to those cloud storage services, basically we can maintain previous versions of our DWGs in those services. So we've introduced a new drawing history palette in this release, and you can surface older versions and you can sort on them by um, things like date, uh, the user that generated the revision, times between uh, versions. And basically, if you choose the compare function, you're gonna open up the DWG compare feature that exists uh, today, and then the differences are displayed directly in your current drawing. You can import changes from that drawing directly into your current drawing and save them uh, but basically, it's an extraordinary time saver for dealing with prior versions. And we know that when you have big teams working on uh, designs for commercial commercial buildings, for example, you, you have a lot of drawing history that you've actually got to reconcile. Uh, this tool makes it a snap. So I uh, really recommend that you give this a try. XREF Compare, uh, another super common thing that we hear about uh, in terms of our customers uh, in their designs, particularly complex designs, is managing lots of XREFs. Uh, so basically we've taken it uh, so that if there, an XREF is changed in your current drawing, you will be notified about it. If you click on that notification, it'll take you to uh, XREF Compare, which shows you the differences between the XREFs, either old or new. Um, and your ability to actually incorporate uh, edits from an older XREF into your current drawing uh, is a snap. You can do it right in that workflow and you can turn off uh, visibility for, you know, not in current drawing, shown in current drawing and overlap uh, in a way that's super productive. Uh, so XREF Compare really simplifies uh, the management of multiple XREFs and XREFs that change, particularly from downstream contractors that you don't have a ton of control over. Our blocks palette uh, has been enhanced and now, and especially in this time where we have these shelter in place orders and we're working from home, uh, the blocks palette now will leverage content that you store in cloud storage, storage locations so that you have your blocks available to you no matter where you're working. So the common example that we would have given uh, prior to this disruption would have been, uh, you know, you work on a powerful workstation at your office, 
you go home, you remember this thing that you were uh, supposed to work on before you left the office, you log into AutoCAD Web, your blocks palette that you were using is there, you can make the changes quickly, save the drawing, and, and, and nobody's slowed down uh, because of something you might have missed before you got out of the office. Now we would probably tell the story in the other direction, right? You're sheltering in place, you're working at home, you're able to be productive in AutoCAD Web today, um, you're making changes that uh, are incorporating new blocks, and now when you get to go back to the office, you'll have those blocks available to you, um, uh, you know, in your in your desktop AutoCAD application. So I, I think the key here, right? If you if you think about the way that we're investing in the product right now, we're really trying to leverage these partnerships that Dania uh, talked about um, and helped bring aboard to the AutoCAD platform to really make you productive uh, wherever you're working. Um, and because of these cloud service options, we get power that we wouldn't ordinarily have had uh, in our uh, AutoCAD platform. And when you think about the platform the way we do, we think about the platform in terms of the desktop products, the specialized tool sets, um, the web product, the mobile product, and even uh, we even have something that we refer to as the design automation API uh, to automate common tasks uh, in the cloud. That's available at autodesk.com if you want to have a look at it. So anyway, trying to leverage that kind of common uh, connective tissue, if you will, in cloud storage is something that makes these features super powerful. And when we talk to customers uh, about, hey, what feature would you like to see in the next release of AutoCAD? Invariably, what we hear is performance, performance, performance. And so one of the benefits that uh, subscription gives us is that it allows us to focus on the kinds of substantial capabilities that take multiple releases to fully realize. Uh, so if you've been paying attention over the last couple of releases, uh, certainly you've seen 3D performance improve quite a bit. Um, we've also now made it possible for our 2D performance to have uh, similar uh, performance gains. So the, the reference we use for our internal benchmarks is between AutoCAD release 2016 and now. It's something like a 10x improvement on our 3D, common 3D operations like orbit, pans, and zooms. Uh, but for 2D, uh, now in this release, we can say pretty much the same thing. From 2016 to now, you're getting about a 10x improvement on our internal benchmarks. And the way that we do that is we take uh, common primitives, co common drawing primitives that are inside the DWG, um, and we draw them in a single operation. And it makes our panning and zooming much, much faster in real time. The drawing behind this file uh, here has something like 128,000 objects in it. Uh, it's super speedy on a uh, AutoCAD 2021 installation. So performance is greatly improved in this release as well. AutoCAD Mac, uh, this came just a touch later uh, than our global launch. We, I think our global launch was March 25th. Uh, Mac came out uh, on April 3rd. It picks up XREF Compare. Uh, we did bring Purge, uh, the Purge improvements that were in AutoCAD 2020, we brought them forward. Uh, for the AutoCAD Mac version, and it's now available in Simplified Chinese as well. Uh, again, you know, we have a little bit more time than we might have had uh, before the uh, disruption of the COVID-19 shelter-in-place stuff. Uh, there are a ton of customer success stories on our site. Uh, Tim Campbell is one I, I enjoy listening to. Uh, anybody that will tell me that AutoCAD is like his oxygen is somebody that I'm naturally going to be attracted to. Uh, so we do have, our marketing team's done a fabulous job putting up a ton of customer stories on our site. I would encourage you to read them um, in addition to the productivity uh, studies that I mentioned earlier. And then, so let's just recap. So specialized tool sets, uh, industry specific, specific capability that exists for uh, whatever discipline you're practicing. Dania gave you a good overview on our web and mobile apps and the capabilities that they give to you. We've given you some, um, we've given you a quick fly through our newest features. And then finally, just, I really wanna summarize with, you know, subscription matters here, right? Because of subscription, all of this is available to you. Um, and it's available just by taking the new release. Uh, we recognize that when I say just take the new release, sometimes in some environments that's not as easy as others if you're controlling, you know, hundreds or thousands of seats of AutoCAD. Uh, but this capability exists today and it's available for you now. 
So with that, I'll go ahead and wrap and open it up for Q&A. Uh, Michelle or Donnie, if I missed anything, do please let me know. I don't think so. I am seeing a couple of questions come in and trying to follow up and answer them in the background here. Um, but I think that was a yeah, so yeah, and Christelle asked the question, could you please provide more information about the technology for the data storage and connectivity, or could you let me know where I could find it? It sounded like uh, yeah. that my customer might consider it. Yeah, that sounds great. So um, it depends on which one you're talking about. So we have um, the save to web and mobile functionality. I, I can send you a, a blog article about how that works. Um, and then for each of the storage um, providers that we mentioned, so our partners, uh, Google, uh, Microsoft, um, Box, and Dropbox, they have their own documentation um, that you can use those cloud storage providers as, as they work. Um, and the connectivity is fairly simple. So as soon as you log into the AutoCAD web app, you'll see um, a, a prompt to be able to connect that storage up. And it's it's very simple. You just enter your uh, you know, username and password and you're connected. So, um, and then vice versa, when you're in the AutoCAD, uh, sorry, when you're in the provider's applications, these um, these tools to be able to preview and open those files um, happen by default. And so, um, particularly with um, OneDrive, Box, and, um, and um, oh my gosh, OneDrive, SharePoint, uh, and Google Drive, um, they will uh, appear by default in those user experiences. So there's no actual setup required there. I hope that answers your question, but feel free to ask another one. Okay, great. Um, there was another question about what are the platforms for the mobile app? So uh, the primary platforms are iOS and Android. Um, and so um, th that should cover most of your needs. Um, if there's something else that I'm missing here, please let me know. Um, but it works on an iPad, on your phone, uh, iPhone or uh, Android phone. Um, we also actually on a Windows Surface device, you're able to um, to to use the what's called the Universal Windows Platform application. So the mobile application will work on a, a Windows Surface as well. Of course, on that device, you could use AutoCAD Desktop or AutoCAD uh, Web as well. So your choice. All right, and Sam, uh, Simon is asking, what is the remote desktop performance for AutoCAD? Will it still have lag? And what would be your solution if you need to open AutoCAD remotely and the drawing file is on a private server? That's a good one. Uh, remote desktop performance is dependent on so many things that don't have much to do with AutoCAD. Uh, what I will tell you is that uh, our developers actually log into machines in our offices in San Francisco and San Rafael and are doing work directly on AutoCAD code today through remote desktop. I know that's not the question you asked, but I do want to let you know that it, uh, it's, a, it's a situation that we deal with too. Like I said, remote desktop performance is going to uh, be gated primarily by your connection speed. Uh, so and I'll offer you a couple tips. If you're logged in on a VPN, by definition, you're going to be slower. VPNs will, you know, VPNs have to do a bunch of authentication. They have to do a bunch of back and forth before they even establish the initial connection. So basically your uh, connection from the machine that you're accessing to the pole, to your office, navigated through VPN, that's gonna be the biggest mitigation in terms of performance that you'll get from a remote desktop. Of course, uh, software on the machine is gonna change things too. So uh, the answer is some of us get very, very good performance uh, for remote desktop into machines in their offices. Uh, but in our cases, at least, what we're seeing is that the folks that have fiber at the house and are not going through VPN are getting the best performance. I hope that helps. I do just want to double check that the, the questions that were answered earlier um, were, were answered to their liking. So if you if you uh, still have more questions, please do pipe up and ask again. And if you would like to ask a question live, I can unmute your line and you can join us in the conversation if you'd like. Michelle, just so you know, I, I don't actually see questions, so I'm not sure uh, if there's something I need to do on my side. No, that was my fault. 
my fault. Let me try to fix that. Great, thanks. Uh -huh. uh, Christelle is asking, what would be your killer argument to use AutoCAD instead of LT? Well, uh, a killer argument, that's awesome. That's a great question. Uh, the primary killer argument is if you take uh, anything in a section or a layout or anything that comes from a 3D model, uh, AutoCAD is going to be the tool you use. Automated uh, use cases and content availability that comes to you from the specialized tool sets will be available to you in, um, in AutoCAD. Uh, Dania, what might I be missing? Yeah, it's. I think it's. There's a lot of richness in the in the customization story that you're talking about. So not only can you customize your look and feel, but you can really create um, um, automations that make you much much more productive. Especially if you do a lot of the same um, template creation or standards, or um, you know you have a certain way that you want to set up your layers or anything um, to do with uh, your drafting efficiency, you're gonna get a lot more out of the customizations with AutoCAD than, than you can with LT. Those are not available to you in LT. So um, to me, uh, there's a really big difference there um, in the, the productivity of, a, of an AutoCAD user versus an LT user. So again, if you do have questions, feel free to uh, put those in the Q&A panel or you can uh, raise your hand in the attendee panel and I can unmute your line so you can ask it live. I did want to clarify one other thing. So um, the, uh, the extended access program is for those of you who don't already have a subscription to AutoCAD, but if you do have a subscription to AutoCAD, you can continue to use the AutoCAD web and mobile apps beyond the um, extended access program. And so um, now's a really good time to try it, especially with folks uh, that you want to collaborate with that don't necessarily have access today. So you can see how it might work in your workflows. Um, and then you can continue to use it after the fact as well. And Christelle is asking um, if we could please send the blog link for the web app. So that we will make sure that gets sent to you. Yep. And Marilis is asking the question, uh, any improvements on the connectivity with Revit? Uh, the process of cleaning a CAD file to import into Revit is tedious and time consuming. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, this is definitely something that we've heard before and something we're looking into heavily. Um, in this release, we didn't make uh, significant improvements to the, the, the Revit interrupt. Michael, correct me if I'm wrong. However, we are definitely looking into this uh, very closely. And um, one of the things we're most interested in making sure that your data is, is easily accessible in both applications. So if you, for instance, have used uh, BIM 360 as your um, design collaboration platform, um, that we make that much, much easier to access from, from AutoCAD and from Revit um, from any device. But again, that's that's kind of in the works and a bit hopeful, but we've definitely heard this this um, request before. So uh, we're working on it. And anything, uh, you know, I guess I just would add the following is any interoperability between any of our products. If, if you know, there's things that we can do to clean that up for you, make sure that you uh, let your account managers know, make sure that you let, uh, you know, like if you're talking to the Revit product team, make sure you let them know as well. Uh, there's a lot of moving pieces. You know, you've got AutoCAD, you've got Revit, they've got separate uh, development paths, and then you've got the connective tissue in the middle with BIM 360 or other cloud services that you might be using. Uh, so there are a lot of moving pieces, but we definitely want to know the places that we can help you be more productive. And on that note, uh, next month we'll actually be talking with the Revit product managers so that you can ask your questions live to them. You have four questions. Oh, it looks like one did come in. Um, Tesla asked the question, in BIM 360, can you edit CAD files in the cloud? Um, yes, you can. So go ahead. Um, yeah, I was I was trying to sort through that mentally. I'm, I'm thinking that the answer is yes, you can edit through the LMB viewer, but I'm making that up a little bit, Dania. Um, yeah, that, that's made up. But um, <laughs> you... Uh, 
you you can uh, edit your your BIM 360 files um, through the desktop connector today. So if you have your BIM 360 files, uh, so a DWG that's stored in BIM 360, you can use the Autodesk desktop connector, which gives you um, dex desktop access to that cloud file and allows you to open it on your desktop, work with it, and save it back. Does that make sense? Made a lot more sense than what I said. Thank you, Dania. LMV is a great tool for, for viewing any type of Autodesk file for uh, for the record. So if you're able to uh, send a file to somebody else that, that doesn't have AutoCAD, that, that would be a really good way of accessing CAD files in the cloud um, for, for non-CAD users. Okay, any more questions? Oh, Stephen is asking, can you access BIM 360 files via Autodesk web? Um, it's in the works. It's something that we're really uh, heavily considering and, and working on. So uh, this would fall under uh, something to look out for, uh, hopefully soon. Other questions that you might have? Again, you can, uh, oh, I do see someone did raise their hand. So let me uh, open up Thessla's line. And I apologize if I've said that wrong. Are you able to speak with us, Thessla? I already asked the question. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Thanks. That's okay. Okay. All right. I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, again, next month we will be talking to the Revit product managers to talk about what's new in the Revit products. And so you don't want to miss that. Uh, definitely, we'll we'll have some fun. Uh, you know, seeing what's new and being able to ask the questions live like you were today. So I want to thank Michael and um, and Dahlia, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Daniel, uh, for the great presentation. You guys are amazing. And um, I appreciate you, you taking the time first, you know, to prepare the presentation and then also to stick around and, and answer those questions very much. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you. Well, if we don't have any more questions, we will give you 15 minutes back to your day. Uh, if questions do arise, definitely feel free to send them to us and we will get back with you as quickly as we can. All right, everyone have a wonderful day then. Thank you guys. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.